Now, I told you that when you approach machines, you should always ask yourself if you can do it in a safer way. But there's a second thing that I like to do, and it's a little bit gruesome sometimes because it requires a mental exercise of asking yourself what would happen if I fell into this tool? Because really, that's the worst case scenario. Or what other things that are at play that might happen when I use this tool? And just by thinking about those things, you can really, you can really prevent them from happening because you've raised your awareness of them. Uh, for a couple for instances here, we've got a nice thin piece of material again. As you're pushing this through, if you know the forces that are at play with this blade, okay, it's spinning in this direction, so that means if something hits it in the back, you've got something that could potentially lift up and come back at you like this. You certainly, of course, can just shoot it right back this way. So that, what's that tell us? Worst case scenario, if that happened, where do I not want to be? Right in the line of fire, okay? Where we really want to be is out to the side. Okay, but we know that, no one had to tell us that, we know that by the forces that are at play with the tool. You know, so you want to have a nice wide stance, make sure you're very comfortable, and push the material through. And this way, if you do have an accident, okay, your hands, you don't want them anywhere near the blade. So if you do fall, you can catch yourself before anything gets anywhere near the blade. So it's sort of a very broad recommendation, but I really think it helps for each and every tool. And you'll see with the other ones that we look at. Now here at the jointer, this goes back to the pictures that I posted, and this should ring home for a lot of people. Ring home? Does that make sense? Okay. Now at the jointer, it's really critical that you ask yourself this question. What happens if I trip? I've got a lot of things that I could catch my sneakers on here, so I could very well fall into this. And you need to be aware of where your hands and everything is so that you can prevent uh, a dangerous thing from happening. As you're pushing the material through, let's say you're using your bare hands, like our example on the website, and you're pushing this through. Now if you had asked yourself ahead of time, should this board get caught and slide out of my hands, what's going to happen? Where's my body weight going to go? Uh, if you ask yourself that question, you'll find out that your hand's going to go right into the joiner blades. Very dangerous thing. So you don't want to do that. Um, you know, obviously, as a solution, things like these paddles are great for that as well. Now, edge jointing. That's something that doesn't seem all that dangerous, right? Your fingers are usually a good distance away from that blade. But let's say you're halfway through the cut, something happens, and you trip. Okay, now if your hands are going through with the cut like this, and you do wind up falling forward, this hand's going to go right into the blade. Now if this hand, uh, that's sort of being the one that's really doing most of the pushing, if this hand is pushing it through, and you're just sort of holding it at the top, you could still slip this way into the blade. So what I always do is make sure my hand is sort of caught on the back of the fence as I'm pushing it through. Okay, now there, none of this is absolutely guaranteed, but it stacks the cards in your favor. So that if I do push through, my, most of my hand is on this back fence, and I have a sort of forward motion, chances are my hand's going to go this way. It's not going to go into the blade. So thinking about that worst case scenario tells you what you need to avoid doing. Now here we are at the bandsaw. It's one of my favorite tools, but it's also one of the most dangerous. If you think about what can happen as you're pushing, all that weight goes forward and your hands are in front of that blade, what's going to happen? Well, if you go to the butcher shop, you know exactly what's going to happen. Uh, so what I like to do is as I'm pushing material through, if I'm this far away from the blade, no problem. I could be in the path of the blade. It's not very dangerous. But once I get to, the, I would say, maybe the four to six inch range, at that point, I need to change up my stance. I have to do something different. So I do one of two things. I'll either go around to the back of the blade, and I'll start pulling it through. Okay, so if worst case scenario, I do slip or fall, nothing's going to hit the blade. I may hit the machine, but I'll have an opportunity to recover before I even come close to being exposed to the blade. The second thing, which is really my favorite thing to do, is about halfway through a cut, I'll usually stop and I'll hold the board with one hand, I'll step around to the back, and I'll actually start pulling everything through. Now, this isn't like a table saw. On a table saw, you never leave a piece standing still. Um, it's just too dangerous. It can catch and go flying right into your gut. On a bandsaw, it's all vertical motion, so technically you can go halfway through a cut and not that I would necessarily recommend doing this, but you can leave the board there and it's pretty safe. It's not going to go anywhere. So I still, I hold one hand so it doesn't move around too much because the quality of my cut matters. And I go around to the back and then I pull it the rest of the way through. And now I'm not even anywhere near a danger zone. I could fall and I'll just fall on the floor and look stupid. I just won't have to go to the ER afterwards.